Hello everyone, welcome to another Zwiftalyzer video about how to make your Zwift setup more reliable. One in every four activities uploaded to Zwiftalyzer suffers from AND or Bluetooth dropouts. Some players have come to accept dropouts as an unavoidable aspect of Zwift, comparing them to real life random mishaps like punctures or dropped chains. I disagree. You can eliminate dropouts by cleaning up your Wi Fi environment and carefully positioning your devices to minimize interference. I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. First, a primer on Wi Fi, AMP Plus, and Bluetooth low energy. AMP Plus and Bluetooth are extremely low powered radio signals of about 1 milliwatts designed for transferring small packets of data over short distances. Wi Fi is 10 times more powerful and carries large amounts of internet data over much longer distances. The first Ant Plus devices to appear on the market in 2000 were foot pods for runners. Heart rate monitors and cycling power meters followed soon after. These products were designed over 20 years ago to work outdoors, powered by tiny watch batteries lasting weeks. They were not designed to withstand interference from the cacophonous Wi Fi environment of the modern home. But here we are. While radio signals spread in all directions, the most effective and strongest signal path is in a straight line. When Wi-Fi and AND plus or Bluetooth signals intersect, they can interfere with each other, leading to signal disruption. By carefully placing your devices to avoid crossing these signal lines, you can eliminate such interference. There are lots of other things we can do around our Wi-Fi or network connection in the first place before we get into optimizing the AND plus or Bluetooth dongle position. So tip number one. Use Wahoo Direct Connect. If you have a Kicker V5 or higher, for $100 you can get the Direct Connect device to hardwire the trainer to your network. This eliminates the need for Ant Plus or Bluetooth altogether. Problem solved. Tip number two, use Ethernet. One of the simplest ways to eliminate interference from Wi-Fi is to not use Wi-Fi. Use a wired network connection for your Zwift PC, laptop, or Apple TV. Tip number three, use five gigahertz Wi-Fi. Use the five gigahertz frequency band for all your Wi-Fi needs if you can. This isn't an option for everyone though, since some older devices like printers and ring doorbells only work on 2.4 gigahertz. Tip number four, on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, avoid channel 10. If you must use 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, use channels one to five and avoid channel 10 because it uses the exact same frequency as AMP Plus, 2.457 GHz. Never use the auto channel selection on your Wi-Fi router. Tip number five, remove physical obstacles. This one's fairly obvious. Low power radio signals don't travel through objects very well. So remove obstacles. Tip number six, turn off other wireless devices. Lots of devices in the home use the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi spectrum. Configure them to use the 5 GHz instead, or just turn them off. Tip number seven, use USB 2. Use the black USB 2 ports, not USB 3. USB 3 is a radio interference generator. Intel wrote a paper on this in 2012. I'll put the links below. Tip number eight, enable the high performance power plan. If your power plan in Windows is set to balanced or power saver, then switch it to the high performance power plan. It uses more energy, but increases performance of always active CPU intensive applications like games. Tip nine, disable USB selective suspending. Windows 10 includes a USB selective suspend feature that automatically puts USB devices into a very low power state when they're not actively in use. This helps prolong battery life on laptops, but it may also cause dropouts if Windows thinks the USB port isn't actively in use when really it is. Tip number 10, use a USB extension cable. Use a short USB 2 extension cable to get your dongle away from the computer. The main reason this works is because you're moving the AMP Plus or Bluetooth stick away from the Wi-Fi receiver. A basic shielded cable is all you need. There's no speed benefit of using USB 3 or an active cable, but there's no harm either. Tip number 11, always use your laptop plugged in. If you're using a laptop, always plug it in. Don't run on battery power. You'll never get the full performance on battery. CPU will be throttled down to save power regardless of the performance plan. Tip number 12, 
Disable old Ant Plus protocols on Tax Neo. Watch GP Llama's video on this. Links above. The gist is this Ant Plus messages can be sent in a number of different formats. Typically, trainers send all the formats they support at the same time but at slightly different intervals. These signals overlap every two minutes or so and they fight for the sole radio transmitter. They both lose and all messages fail for that fraction of a second. When you turn off the old formats, the single remaining format has exclusive use of the radio and you eliminate the failures caused by the radio contention. Tip 13. Disable Garmin Connect. Check for the Garmin Ant agent in the system tray and stop it if it is running so that it doesn't try and use the dongle at the same time as Swift. Tip 14. Don't put the dongle too close. If you place the receiver too close to the transmitter, the signal may get distorted and lead to corrupted data packets. Tip 15. Update your firmwares. Update the firmware in your power meter or smart trainer. Newer firmwares may have improvements for device pairing, newer AMP Plus and Bluetooth profiles, and options for turning off older profiles. Tip 16. Avoid sweat. Sweat kills electronics. Put your dongle in a Ziploc bag and seal it with a cable tie. Tip 17. Replace the batteries. A regular dropout pattern in Zwiftalyzer is a sure sign that the battery in the heart rate monitor or power meter is dying. Tip 18. Line of sight. The rest of this video focuses on this tip because it makes the biggest difference. Recognition and thanks for this tip goes to Dave Higgins, the admin of the Zwift PC Masters and Riders Facebook group. Ensure that the Ant Plus and Bluetooth devices have direct line of sight to the dongle and that the lines do not overlap with the line of sight from your Wi-Fi router and Wi-Fi devices. Let's go into my garage now and do a science experiment to demonstrate this powerful tip. So let me explain my setup. Elite Dorato trainer on ANT Plus. I've got a power meter on the left crank, which I'm just using as a cadence meter right now, just to make uh, pair everything to ANT Plus and generate lots of things in the graph. There's uh, ANT Plus dropout two in a row. This is good because it's bad. I'm going to show you how to avoid that by positioning the devices well. This is badly positioned because this is my Wi-Fi receiver. Imagine that's your computer or your Apple TV or however you run it. It could be your laptop. But for now, just imagine I'm, I'm just I'm using this antenna because I can move it around. So that's connected to the back of my PC. This is my PC's Wi-Fi. So my PC is doing a huge download. I've got Zwift kind of in the middle on purpose because look at those dropouts. It's horrible. It's horrific. That would be, you know, you'd lose the pack, you'd get dropped in a race. That's game over. So this, the, what I'm trying to demonstrate is how you fix this. The reason it's so bad right now is I'm crossing the streams on purpose. The Wi-Fi, imagine the, the direct line from this to where my router is, my router in, in behind this wall. I've just put this light here so you can imagine this line coming straight through here. This is my Wi-Fi signal. And now my ANT Plus signal is crossing the line. I'm wearing a heart rate monitor strap. It's going to that dongle over there. It is, it's just dangling off the side of my desk. So they're deliberately crossed and it's pretty, pretty awful. So what to do about it? Well, it's really straightforward. Take the, the dongle and position it down. I've got a, about a two feet extension cable there. Just hang it off the front fork. Seems that works well for me. The non-drive side usually works best because the non-drive side is where the ANT Plus emitter, uh, uh, transceiver uh, signal is coming from on the trainers. All right, let's try it. Mm. I'm seeing ones now, not ones and twos. Green. The green is. I think it's heart rate. Well, that, that wasn't pretty bad there too, how it leaned in between them. Oh, that's awful. See all that, all that? Yeah, I've got a drop out there because I'm right in between. The Wi-Fi, I put myself in the, in the hot spot there, deliberately causing a drop out. So let's put it back to the clean position. So Wi-Fi up here, ANT Plus down here. Lower the dongle down. Get it really out of the way. Let's put it over the handlebars. Alright, does that clean it up? 
still pretty bad. Mm, starting to clean up. Yeah, it's cleaning up. Oop, blue, blue, getting hot. It's better. Okay, now the deliberate cross the lines. How bad can you? Oh, it's already dropped out. So, okay, this is conclusive. Crossing your Wi Fi stream and your ANT Plus stream results in dropouts. Make it, make it. Well, I'm gonna get on. I'm gonna get on. <laughs> Let's go for a ride. Alright, this is horrible. Dropping out all over the place. Alright, now, now the clean up version. Alright, oh, that's clean already. Maybe that's out of the way. Yeah. Much cleaner. No drops. Well, that was fun. I hope you find these tips useful. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or feedback and please like and subscribe to support this channel. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.